Fundamentals of Mixing, lesson number 16, part two on the subtractive EQ, high pass and low pass filters. Um, now, in putting this together, um, one thing you just need to understand is, if you're watching this from the YouTube side of things or you're just kind of watching this is that this series is not all put together just like in one big blown out thing. Or This is basically a, a once a week class. And so all of the videos that are put in this class are put together um, with a week break in between. Okay, so sometimes I'll open up the session, I'll listen to them on the speakers and see, you know, if I just did some horrible things in the headphones. And, uh, and I've gotten very, very used to mixing with headphones. Um, and I've become very comfortable with it. Uh, I do um, a lot of private instruction. And so in the private instruction, always working with headphones. And so that type of thing, uh, working with clients, uh, mixing online, and a lot of that gets done with headphones. Um, and uh, so, you know, there's there's some things that I've gotten very used to it. So most of the time it translates, but uh, there often are things that fall through. One thing to know is that I'm not making tweaks in between. So, uh, you know, when I open it up, if I hear something horrible, I'm not thinking, oh, God, I got to, you know, correct that before the next class to make it look good. Actually, I prefer to expose it, you know, show that there's a problem there and then and then talk about it, bring it up in the next class. So just, just a little uh, thing on that end. So what we've done here fundamentally and in part one is we've gone through. Uh, so this is a bit of a re review, basically, because since uh, part one of this lesson number 16, that was a week ago in terms of real time, although you may have only seen it yesterday on the YouTube channel, so, and you're just getting now to this video. So, uh, so there's a little time area in there. And so as a result, what I normally do in this case is I want to listen to what it is that I've done. So in other words, in picking up a mix from where you've left off, whether you've left it off uh, an hour ago, a week ago, a month ago, a day ago, um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to listen to where it's at, listen to the whole thing, get an idea of, you know, uh, wrap your head around where you were at or what you were thinking, take yourself back in time. And there's also a part of that when you have any kind of gap in time between working on something where, uh, the problem with it is getting yourself back into the flow or into, you know, into the pattern of working, which can actually be sometimes a difficult thing to manage. You know, you, you take a break. And now all of a sudden your head is not as focused in on exactly what you're doing. And you need to integrate yourself back into what you did so that you don't end up undoing things that you, maybe you forgot that you had done. Okay, so, all right, uh, long intro aside, let's just uh, start by doing a little bit of listening here. I'll start right from the very beginning. Um, and primarily what we've done here, and I'm just gonna toggle through some of these things, is we've done subtractive EQ, maybe a little bit of additive EQ here, primarily high pass and low pass filters, uh, and we're going to continue that process. We've only done this with uh, drums and percussion stuff. So we're gonna kind of see how this uh, plays out for everything else. All right, so do some. So I'm going to focus here just on the on the drums and perk because that's where we kind of left off and then I'll, I'll open up things as we kind of see what's going on. I just want to get a sense of what's happening here. I'm just checking some things out here, like some hi-hat filtering. You can see what I've done there. So this is where I'm looking primarily in any EQ settings. You have a boost in there. All right, so I want to hear some of this stuff with and without. Mm-hmm. 
so there's no additive EQ on the top end. So the openness and clarity is about carving away low frequencies and focusing high frequencies. And you can hear the openness. Most of what you hear in terms of separation is like an up-down separation. When I bypass it, if you listen, you'll notice that things are a little bit more bunched in between the speakers. And when I take it out, you get more height. And that stretching helps to also open up a bit of the front back energy. So you'll notice things like the claps come more forward instead of being sucked in the, in the speaker. So what happens there is that by, uh, by taking away frequencies that, especially on the low end, where if you, if you recall, or if you've watched, just watched the previous video, a lot of what we did on these loops was to take away some of those sub and low frequencies, uh, dipping some things out. I think I also did uh, a low mid. Yeah, great. So there's a, actually that shelf is not in. So I'm not sure if I left that EQ out for a reason or whether that was accidental. Um, and here, like I did a low mid dip. So these are three, um, these are three loops that um, are, are kind of tied in and focus uh, with the kick drum. So two of them only appear in the chorus sections, as you see here. Uh, the other one kind of runs throughout once you get past the first verse section. And then here's the kick drum track, right? So the kick drum and I have the bass in between. I normally have the bass next to the kick drum um, when I mix because they pretty much are the most interactive with each other. Uh, getting the bass to work with the drums, especially the low end elements, uh, I'll kind of move them together. Or if I have drum loops because they're drums and they have low frequency content in them, I'll move them together because it's the interaction of those things. Uh, it's sort of a throwback to when working on analog consoles where you would see the EQs all side by side. One of the unfortunate things about plugins is that, you know, you can stack the plugin windows next to each other, but you don't really see them side by side. And quite often you could just look and, you know, and just really see like, oh, I boosted 220 on both of them. Maybe that's why it's so muddy, that type of thing. All right. So, all right. All right. So, uh, so all of that is pretty good. Let's, let's kind of start to bring in some of the other elements here then and uh and then uh focus on this so there's a, a couple of let's just kind of clean up what we have here on the rest of the drums and percussion so there's some basic elements here that may not require anything at all one is uh, a kick build uh so let's just see here did i actually um there we go okay good all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to copy this over to these three channels these are three mono channels i have a kick build here we're going to start with this Now there's, there's a little bit of a low element there, but that's not going to be the driving thing that's going to push through. So I want to hear what this. There is a little bit of something there, and I don't want to lose the, the warmth of that, but the primary element there is that kick. Now, or that click. Now there's also some noisy kind of uh, fuzzy stuff up at the top, and I want to see if I can kind of clear a little bit of that out. Like, so some of that type of stuff that's in there is not particularly helpful. Right? Like, that's not really, that's not making that, that kick drum kind of cut through. I could always find a frequency in there to make that cut through that's a little bit warmer that then I'll find a hole somewhere in the mix and the rest of that that I would boost that. But let's just see. Like, so that now cuts through a little bit better than. Like, that's what makes it sound louder with that high frequency thing in there, but that's not really uh, the way I want to go. There's actually something. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, what I wanted to do is do something here that. Um, 
because I think that uh, although there is some uh, sort of cause to rise that up or raise that up there, I don't think that that's the best way to deal with it. It doesn't really get heard in that in that initial section there anyhow, because uh, what ends up happening is that um, the kick drum itself, because it's just it's right on beat with the existing kick drum, it's you're not hearing you're not hearing that kind of cut through as much on the single hit. So and that may require like a slightly varied or different effect. I'm just kind of eyeballing this here. So let's just see if this if this plays out with something. You can hear the noise in there. I'm not sure what this is. That is not a kick build. Um Hmm. Uh, maybe that is better suited to be in the uh, in the realm here with the reverse symbols. Uh, oh, that's in the effects channel. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna. Oh, wait a minute. The reverse symbol is up here, so there is uh, some other way to go about it. Let's take a look here. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. This is actually probably going to find a better place in terms of the processing uh, uh, up here, you know. So I'm just going to move it out up there, and uh, let's just leave it there. It might find its way onto a separate track, but more likely uh, that that's going to play out better there than where I had it. All right, so let's see. We also have a snare build. This has a similar type of problem here, so I'm going to call up my uh, e-channel. Now, I have this kind of low level. I can't remember exactly, or maybe it just looks low level. But this is, again, similar. <laughs> Funny. kind of works. Just notice just notice that like the fuzziness that's in there. How more focused that is. It find, it kind of finds its place in there. And there'll, again, there'll probably be a similar type of thing where that focuses in. I think it, at that, as far as that symbol goes, that reverse symbol, because it's so infrequent, I'm probably not going to do anything on it at all. I'm just going to run it through the channel here, uh, give it a little bit of a harmonic distortion characteristic, and it may actually uh, apply some compression with it. But let's move on to the guitars. And uh, um, now that we've gotten through this, there's also some effects channels here. Now this is on a separate, uh, this is on a separate feed. Um, so maybe let's just take a look and, and see what we got going on here. Uh, one of these has nothing on it. Okay. All right. So let me just put that in. And then let's just see here from the effects channels. It looks like I had, uh, um, okay. I have to go back over to this side effects. All right. All right, so let's just see here. I don't know if there's anything really up there worth... Uh... All right, that's that's probably going to be... Let's see what happens. We have something different on the end here. Okay, I can filter that down a little bit, and I think that'll basically... 
you know, kind of keep it a little bit focused. Again, especially for these temporary elements, you know, um, you could kind of go either way. It's more becomes more critical with elements that are playing quite a lot. Uh, but you know, so, but let's just kind of see. Ah, yes, the down riser or the downer, as I call it. Um, and let's see, I just got my uh, channel strip here. If you're not familiar with that shortcut, if you hold your command key or start key if you're in Windows and select a plugin, it'll show up on a short list. Uh, so when you do that, you can create a short or a quick like for your favorite EQs. So you would hold your hold that start key or command key, find the plugin that you want to be on the list. It shows up actually in yellow on the list once you've selected it. And then it won't actually instantiate the plugin. Nothing will happen except it'll show up on that short list. So if you if you find that you're using particular plugins uh, quite often, you know, then that's that's a good uh, good one. So even though that kind of, you know, ramps down in terms of frequency, it doesn't really go that low. Um, I think I'm just going to kind of stay with something around 12K here. Doesn't really affect what's going on and whatever uh, little subtle stuff is going on there is not going to be an issue. I'm just going to copy this over. Let's just see what happens here. And since I want, I'm going to make some of these effects sound a bit more distant, so I don't mind rolling off top end because that will help them sound more like they're coming off in the distance. The more high frequency, particularly high mid content, shows up, the more that it's going to sound up front and forward, the more full frequency it is. So filtering it down is not a problem to me. And there are more important elements that are going to need attention in there. So you can hear how like that siren sounds more distant with filtered down. And creates more, you know, a depth and distance effect. And that's kind of what, a little bit of what we're going for here with the staging. All right, let's move on to the Goove On, which is like a combination of Move On and Groove On. Um, or, or Go Forward or Go On. I have no idea. I'm just making shit up as I go along. Let's see what we got here. Uh... Some of these things, the levels are kind of low. I'm just going to turn this, make it so that you can kind of hear them a little better. I want to find something that doesn't that makes it so that it doesn't get thinned out or lose its its uh, body, but but get out anything that's kind of below that. Some of these things are so subtle you can barely hear them, if at all. And yes, I am cutting down like around to like filtering down like above eight or nine K. Sometimes like uh, on a digital EQ, do like a really sharp filter. Uh, this is like, a, if I remember right on the E series, I think it's only 60 B per octave. It's a pretty soft, like more warming kind of filter on this. Uh, I'm gonna use black. I like the black uh, knob EQ a little better. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
so I got a little bit uh, going on there. Let's see what we got uh, from this side here. So there's two other parts here. A reason to kind of make this into uh, uh, too long of a drawn out process here. Although if I can drag something out, I'll usually find a way to do that, whether I like it or not. Uh, so let's see. Awesome. I'm going to leave these guys with a little bit more top end, right? So, all right, so I'm going to just copy the settings here and then uh, paste it into here. These guys are identical. So, let's just see. So what I, the reason why I'm leaving the top end on these guys a little bit more open is that if you listen, they kind of rise above each other, right? So if I, if I just, if I bypass all four EQs, notice how that, that funky guitar kind of rises up in the same level as the other, as those other guitars, rhythm guitars in the darker green. Now it sinks a little bit lower and, and those other guitars raise up just a touch. So what I'm doing is creating just a subtle separation between the two so that they exist on kind of different levels. And that way when they come in in that chorus and those guitar parts lift up a little bit, then you get that whole thing, right? So, um, you know. Let's see. Sorry about the level there. Okay, so now we also have this uh, this other sort of solo-ish type of guitar, and uh, let's let's uh, see if we can kind of work with this a little bit. I'm not getting so much into. I'm going to get into with some later stage of EQ with this, but these guitars are fundamentally pretty clean and pretty cool sounding, so I'm not going to mess with them too much. Right, so this is some mid-range stuff, but we're going to kind of dig into that a little bit. All right, so this is everything. All all filters bypassed. Not only is there like an up, down, and depth uh, perception, a width perception too, that kind of kicks in. Of course, I bypass it just as it stops. So that's everything bypassed. All right, it's actually pretty amazing how this can kind of uh, stack up. All right, so let's uh, let's let me go back here and now kind of bring in the uh, keys stem, and uh, let's start focusing in on some of those. So with the keys, we have a string pad, uh, we have a pad, we have strings. Let's start with a pad here, and let's just see uh, what we can uh, what we can uh, f up with this. Uh, let's just see here. 
All right, so I have lots of plug-in windows open here. I'm gonna want this to, to kind of sit a little bit lower in the speaker. but not interfere with the bass, not down too low. So I'm gonna kind of filter off some low end just to kind of focus it down a little bit because that's gonna mix in with these strings and I want the strings to kind of sit a little bit higher in the speaker. So uh, let's see if I can accommodate both of those. Okay, so this is the string here that I just moved. This is uh, this and now So I'm going to leave a little more natural warmth and low end. Or maybe I'll filter up a little bit. Let's see. If... And uh, maybe I'll skip forward here. Let's just see. There's a little bit of a digitally sample kind of thing there, so I'm just kind of working on that, but up on the higher end. There's no numbers that pop up here, but that's probably somewhere in the 15K range. So I just want you to hear like the interaction between these two and the separation. So notice how the strings pull a little forward and, and that pad shifts backward a little bit. So just creating a little bit of openness there. Let's just see. Right, so just creating a little more separation. Um, the more that you actually carve away um, low frequencies in particular from instruments, especially where they don't really have them, the, the way to do it is if what you're listening for is you're bringing that high pass filter up as you're kind of swinging it up, swinging it up until you start to hear it. And then you start to back up a little bit from there. So the idea then is that by bringing that up, there is some content down there unless it's doing something constructive to the sound, it's more likely um, creating disclarity with the instruments that really need it. And there's probably nothing that needs more focus and clarity than low frequencies or sub frequencies. So the less junk there is down there, the more clearly that, the, that area is gonna pop through and the same on the top end. What happens on the top end is if there's too much fuzzy stuff up there, and fuzzy, um, a lot of times that comes in the form of reverb added onto plugins. You heard that with some of the um, some of the effects uh, and uh, samples, the kick and snare build samples and stuff like that. When that stuff is in there, and, and and that is like noise on guitars, it creates kind of like a fog over the top end, and that that makes it harder for you to see the separation or hear the space uh, or see the space that's in between individual instruments. 
uh, it sounds crazy, but it, it really works. Like you can really hear how the, the clarity of that opens up. So let's just uh, move on to the Rhodes track. And uh, this kind of skips forward here to the chorus section. And this is this is a classic thing here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put that's the um, uh, the pad and the strings, and now we have the roads. So we'll be able to open up all of the individual channels here. I don't mind being aggressive on this and making this very. Making it mid rangey. Obviously, if there was like some deep, rich low end, I want to preserve that. So there's also a, a lead synth part. So I'm just going to kind of bring that over. So this will be the lead synth part. Now this is something where I can really be more aggressive on the low end if it... Get it to be focused in a higher frequency range than the roads. So one sinks a little bit lower, they're focused in different areas, and and then they kind of fit into a particular area. So now this is going to couple uh, also here with the horns that are also playing in this whole section. So let me just call up another, um, here, I'll hold the uh, shift key so I can open, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to there and, uh, uh, come on, there we go. So I'm taking away all the spaz here. So this, this is the horns. Because this ends up in a similar area, like panned a little over to the left, got the roads in the middle, and then this guy over to the right a little bit. My tendency is to want to separate these a little bit, but I want to hear that before adjusting the pan and the total of, total of, uh, of the mix. to keep some of the warmth there of the horns and so clearing that up when we get to early reflections and reverb that the space will really create the distance there so this is uh bypassed on all of the keys let's just go through that chorus section again What I was doing there was opening up the top end of those horns a little bit because they're because they, they're getting a little choked down. So here I'm gonna bypass everything. No subtractive EQ on the whole mix that is. we 
So what's interesting is for all of the top end I've rolled off, you don't hear that in the overall. I'll just repeat that over and over again until I annoy the crap out of you. Because it's important to understand that there there's an element here that um, what you want is in the instruments that need it, you want it to be heard focused and clearly. And it won't be that way if you have too much noise and other things, especially uh, on top end and low end. And the thing about the top end and the low end and, uh, and with many instruments kind of being carefully, like with fixed fundamental instruments, it's much easier to carve away like low mid frequencies, like on kick drums and toms and things like that, or uh, slightly higher in the mid range, like a boxy frequency on a snare drum, like around 500, that's usually an area in toms, four or 500, that usually gets a bit boxy. Um, what ends up happening that there is because the fundamental of those instruments are fixed, um, it's easier to carve away those frequencies and create space for some of the other instruments in there. And those are important frequency area, fundamental frequency areas for uh, instruments that are have musical notes. And those are instruments that have um, shifting fundamentals. Uh, there's a tonal character that you get with a Rhodes or any other uh, an organ or any particular instrument. But when that per when they're playing, they're playing and going through, ripping through different notes, now that fundamental, it's going up through that tonal scale. And if you just start arbitrarily dipping in a particular area, you can start to make certain phrasings and notes that are being played disappear. Um, this kind of helps to um, uh, deal with it on the top end and the low end. The more clarity, the more you can stretch the, the top end clarity up and the low frequency um, subcontent down, what happens is it kind of opens up the mid-range, which can then breathe. Because if there's too much, uh, there's sort of an inverse logic that goes with subtractive EQ, which is that the more you take away, the more you get back. Like, in other words, it's not a uh, the sort of um, uh, mindset that makes sense just on a mathematical level would be, well, the more low end you add, the more low end you have in the bottom end. and um, but the reality of that is, yes, you actually have more low frequency content, but it's just a big mess. And what you want is not an amount of low frequency content or high frequency content. You want the clarity of that low frequency or, or high frequency content. And so what happens is when you create that clarity, you create separation. Whenever something bunches up, whenever there's too much of something that's similar, it all starts to glue together. So if you have, like like the example in the previous lesson where we went over the loops and those loops had some sub kick in them that was interfering with the kick drum. Now, if they are playing um, kick patterns or they exist in a beat area where this kick drum, main kick drum drops out and you need that low frequency content, then you find a way to make them work. But otherwise, if they're interfering with each other, then it prevents the low end from sinking in the speaker, which means that that Rhodes and the bass don't have that low middle area of the speakers to kind of sit in. And if it doesn't have that pocket, what ends up happening is all of that pulls up into the speakers. So what happens is a mix sounds clouded and clogged up when it's all in between the speakers, almost like a box. Like if you look at the speakers, it would be in an area that would be, let's see, not, uh, this is not the right graphic. I wanna do more of the, not the top view, but the front view, which I think is just a little farther down. There we go. Um, so when you listen to the mix, it would sound like all of the music is coming in an area that's like a box, like around the speakers. So as you see that, if you feel that or like everything is there or stuck there, that a lot of that has to do with the fact that you, you, you're sharing too many frequencies. So when you start to open up or clear up the top end, it rises. When you clear up the low end, it sinks. And now all of a sudden that Rhodes or that Hammond organ that is bunching up and really screwing up your mix has a place to sink, sink down in the speakers and the bass is able to sink down and hold those low mid frequencies. And then all of a sudden those guitars, which sounded really muddy, have the warmth that they need and they open up on the sides and then you get some depth perception. So it's such a critical thing, you know, uh, such a critical thing uh, in the mixing process. All right, so I think um, we pretty much have everything except for vocals. And um, 
for this, there is filtering that's done on vocals, but I think I want to approach vocals in a, uh, a whole separate realm. In other words, into like a, probably have a dedicated lesson that's specific to vocals where we get into that in backgrounds. Uh, but for the most part, I think um, let's just kind of do a quick listen here uh, to some of this kind of A, B, all of this in and out. Focus on that. I will just put the back the vocals in here and, and just see what the hell happens. And then I'm going to bypass the EQs, the subtractive EQ in and out uh, before we move on to the next lesson. Notice how the vocal yeah. sounds muddy. It's just what we have to here. To just claim the pain. But here it sounds warm. I think uh, I think we get the basic idea here. Okay, um, let's move on. Uh, I'll, I'll take this, uh, uh, call this uh, a wrap on this. It doesn't mean that we won't revisit this because there's always a place to revisit things. Um, but uh, for this basic part of it, I think it's fundamentally pretty good. We're able to you know kind of focus in and hone in on all the instruments. And in the, the next phase, we're going to get into what I call functional compression. Um, and this is going to help to enhance some of the work that we've already done. And, uh, and so it would be pretty straightforward, basic approach. And uh, we're going to use the SSL E channel for all of that, for all of that functional compression. So you can see that in process. And that's a wrap on uh, part two of lesson 16, high pass filters, low pass filters, and sub EQ, subtractive EQ, that is.